after working with communities for a very long time and then when I went to school to study, as I was doing my masters I thought of what can I do to give back to my community and I felt that after interviews with community members one of the biggest issues was accessing clean fuel for cooking. So when I finished my studies I came back to the community and said okay so how will I be able to help the community bridge the gap of finding out, finding what type of fuel is good for them to use and of course which one is affordable. So I had an opportunity to discuss with different people who had had opportunity to, to work on briquettes. I didn't have any idea of what briquettes are, but I had a dream of trying to see how to, I can recycle waste in my community to get these briquettes. The process of making charcoal briquettes goes through three to four major stages. One is to get the raw materials from the farmers. These are usually the groundnut farmers who give us the granite shells. We then either train them to make the, the to make to carbonize this. There's a process called carbonization whereby we burn these shells but we don't make them into ash. So what we, what comes out of that process is called char. So that process is charring the shells. And then when we char the shells, we deliver the char to the production site where it's now mixed with binder. And then after mixing with binder, we use the binder we're using at the moment is waste cassava, which we make into porridge, mix it with the, with the, the char that we brought from the farmers, mix some charcoal dust to improve its density, and then we pass it through a mixer that helps us to mix up very well, neatly. Then after that, we pour it into the extruder with a mold that is able now to extrude the briquettes and we take it to dry. So drying is the, the second last stage because it will take two to three days to have it dried under the sun. And once it's dry, we pack it and it's ready for sale or for use in house, uh, by households or institutions. We want to encourage people to use an alternative to firewood so that we save our forests and protect our environment, as well as encouraging people to plant more trees to replace the ones they have cut. The tree is a very critical factor in the livelihood of the people of this place. People who rely solely on agricultural productivity, people who rely solely on selling uh, wood, in all forms, in form of timber, in form of charcoal, in form of firewood. Now, when we want to preserve the tree, that means we are curtailing the livelihood of these people. When we stop them from using the tree, that means their livelihood are at risk. Now, we need to find a solution. We need to find a middle ground. The middle ground, I believe, is the going for an alternative to firewood, to wood energy as a, an energy for a source of energy for cooking. We need to get an alternative to charcoal, an alternative to firewood. And this is where a briquette comes in handy. So many people don't have employment and we felt that in this project we could be able to make use of the available uh, human resources, especially for the unemployed youth and the unemployed women. And today most of them are working in our project. So as much as it was a challenge, today is an opportunity for us because they are able to give us the labor that we have and we have created jobs for them. And this has helped also improve their livelihood because they are able to earn income and meet some of the basic needs in their families from the project. I'm also happy to see that uh, I mentor young people who, who in future should be able to find solutions to the problems in their community and not wait for other people to come and give solutions to the problems that they're having in their community. So that's basically what I would want people to look at me as a change maker who is contributing to the development of their community and as an innovator.